Good morning, everyone. Lovely to see you this morning. That was, that was a beautiful time of worship this morning, wasn't it? Just, just beautiful. So there are lots of reasons that we'll miss Tim and Rachel, and that's just one. But um, the Lord is still good, right? <laughs> so that's good. Um, I, I remember as, as a teenager, I, I visited a church. Um, I think it must have been at the beginning of January because they were talking from a verse in the Proverbs, Proverbs 29 which reads this, where there is no vision, the people perish. And I'm pretty sure I'd read that before, but like I hadn't registered it before. And it just hit me and has stayed with me ever since. Uh, you know, knowing where we're going is important in life, isn't it? Just knowing where you're going. Uh, Bethan and I sometimes walk from our home through to Kingston, do a bit of shopping, coffee, a bit of lunch, um, and we, we, we walk through either Bushy Park or around the river. And then what we do, we go to, some of you will know Kingston, there's those bus stops around by John Lewis, um, and you, we get a bus home from there. Now, there are five buses that go from that bus stop, okay? We could get on any one of them. The problem is this, one gets to our home, one gets close-ish, and three go nowhere near. <laughs> so we do what I guess you would do. You look for the number, right? You look for the number. The vision of a church and how we do things, if you will, our philosophy of ministry, are like looking for the number on a bus. It helps us get on the right bus. It helps us to get involved with the journey of that bus, to know where we're going. And so rather than wasting our time and energy going in the wrong direction, we can actually employ our time and our energy and resources going with others in the same direction. And so today in the life of our church is a day that we call Vision Sunday. And so what I want to do this morning, I want to share just something about what the Lord has called us to be and to do as a church. To, for some, this will be a new thing. For some of us, this will be a reminder or a revisiting of those things. And then I want to share some things that we feel like the Lord is speaking to us for the year ahead. So that's where we're going. We're going to start in Ezekiel chapter 47. If you have a Bible, I'm using paper this morning. You might have a device. The words will come up on the screen. One of the questions that people often ask is, why are you called Riverside Vineyard? And then they'll say, where's the river? A couple of answers to that. If you look at the region that we serve as a church, the River Thames flows right through the heart of that region. So that's just one of the reasons. But another are things like this prophetic text that we read in Ezekiel 47, which is really precious to us. So I'm going to read the first 12 verses this morning. The man brought me back to the entrance to the temple, and I saw water coming from under the threshold of the temple towards the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me round the outside to the outer gate facing east. And the water was trickling from the south side. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits. That's a little over 500 meters. And led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in, a river that no one could cross. He asked me, son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, this water flows towards the eastern region and goes down into the Araba, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because, the water there, because this water flows there and makes this salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. People will fish along the shore from Engedi to Enaglaim. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. 
Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither, nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. Amen. Fabulous verses, just so dear to us in this church. I could speak on this text for hours. I am not going to. But I'm going to share three things. And as I say, some things that we feel the Lord speaking to us about as we head into this year. I, I deeply love this prophetic picture of a river flowing. Not only because Bethan and I have been part of Riverside Vineyard for almost 33 years, but because of this deep sense in which it speaks to us as a church community. I love the way that this river flows. It starts from the temple, from the presence of God, and it flows out and it gets deeper and it gets wider. You might have seen the motif on the floor through the foyer that gets darker and wider as it heads towards the front door. It's a resonance with this prophetic text. And for us, a church, here are three things. We're a church that firstly knows that all good things start in God's presence. We know that, right? Do we? Hope we do. We do. Amen. Every good thing starts in God's presence. This deep and vast river all starts in God's presence. Gets deeper and wider. But do you notice there's no mention of any tributaries joining this river? Natural rivers get deeper and wider because things join them. This talks to the supernatural power of God's presence. And this river brings life. There are swarms of living creatures, large numbers of fish that live and thrive in this river. And that leads to the second thing. We are a community in this church that live in God's presence. We understand the importance of that. God's presence is where we thrive, isn't it? It's where we thrive both individually and as a church community. Surrounded by this life-giving presence, the water of God, the Spirit of God, surrounded, living our lives in that place. And then verse 10, it talks about the fish will be of many kinds. Look around you. Look around you this morning. This is one of the things that uh, for us in this church, I, I'm just almost the most blessed by. <laughs> just the diversity that the Lord has built into our community here. I love the diversity. I, I'm kind of like on the ethnic element of that, 50 plus nationalities now. There are over 450 children and youth that are actively connected with our church and pensioners too. Just the diversity, men and women, the variety of socioeconomic backgrounds. It is a beautiful thing. Let me say this. In my view, churches are supposed to be diverse. It's the way they're supposed to be. Fish of many kinds. Look around you. We are not the perfect church, but I love what Jesus is doing. I love what he's doing. Verse 9. This river brings life wherever it flows. Verse 12, trees bear fruit every month. The trees in our garden do not do that. <laughs> These are living in the supernatural life-giving presence of the river of God. So as a community of faith, as follower of Jesus, thirdly, we're part of God's story of bringing life. As I've been reflecting on this, it seems to me that God does not primarily become part of our story we become part of his. He doesn't primarily become part of our story. We become part of his great story. Someone put it like this way. It's like a train that's been moving through history and we get on it. Jesus comes into our world. And what Jesus does, and you see this in the Gospels, he goes around inviting people to become part of the great story of God. And he does that for us as well. And so actually, one of the things to put on your marker for this year, from January to Easter, we are going to work through the whole of Mark's gospel. Chapter 1 to chapter 16. And one of the things we're going to be looking at is the way that Jesus invites us into his story. What does that look like for people like you and me to be invited in to the story of God? And I believe that as we join in his story, as we go all in, and we do what we can do 
to play our part in his story of bringing abundant life. That is part of the call on us. So everything good starts in his presence. We're part of a community that is learning to love well, and we're part of God's story of his mission. Now that is the heart of our church's vision. Worship God, love others, be Jesus in the world. That's the best summary that we put. I put these little postcards out this morning. If you haven't got one of these, grab one of these, put it in a Bible, put it in your wallet. I would love you to join with us in praying for more of this. It seems to me that as we give our unqualified yes to the Lord, as we're, in, as we're fully part of a church family that's learning to love well, and as we do what Jesus would do in bringing life to the world around us, That is the heart of what the Lord has called us to be and to do. Each year, a bunch of us on the the pastoral team, we go away for a few days. And we do that for a number of reasons. We do that to pray. We do that to effectively inquire of the Lord. Lord. Lord, what are you saying to us? And we drink a lot of coffee. Rob, it's mainly down to you and Ash. This, this past year, we went away sort of, I think it's March or April time, and it just felt to me like the Lord was clearly speaking to us. And then three weeks ago, I was in a coffee shop in Staines with um, two or three people from the Staines site. And we were just chatting and dreaming and sharing together. And this phrase came out of my mouth that I've just not been able to shake off. And so it seemed to me that it was encapsulating what the Lord was saying to us in this next season. The simple phrase is this, make room for more. Make room for more. Like like this river that keeps growing, and you've said this, you've heard me say this before, with the Lord there is always more. There is always more. We can be the kind of people that are making room for more of the Lord, both in our own lives and in our life together as a church community. And so, as I've been reflecting on this, let me uh, jump us forward in in our Bibles to Luke chapter 6. And I'm going to read just a few verses that Jesus uh, shared with his listeners. You'll find it in verses 37 to 42 of Luke chapter 6. Jesus, Jesus says this, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. He also told them this parable. Can the blind lead the blind? Will they both not fall into a pit? Students are not above their teacher, but all who are fully trained will be like their teacher. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in someone else's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say, friend, let me take the speck out of your eye when you yourself fail to see the plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from the other person's eye. A question I've been thinking about over these last few weeks and that I want to just share a few thoughts about is this. How can we make room for more? How can we make room in, in our own lives, in our church community, how can we make room for more? I, I want to share three things and then I'll share a few things uh, that I feel like the Lord inviting us into this year. The first thing is, we make room for more by giving away. Did you notice that? Verse 38, Jesus says, to receive a good measure, that overflowing measure where you're sort of like, you're pressing it down, you're kind of getting rid of all of the gaps so that more can be poured in, running over that sort of overflowing abundance of God's life. Jesus says the way into it is give. Give, and it will be given to you. Press down, running over, giving our time, our money, our resources, our energy. Some of you have heard this story before. There's a story told of a child walking along a beach, picking up beautiful seashells, uh, to the point that the child's hands were full of seashells. 
came across a beautiful starfish. What do I do? And the story goes that the child put down the shells in order to pick up the starfish. There are moments in life where we have to put some things down in order to pick up the thing we need for the next season. Maybe something. Sometimes we put down good things in order to pick up better things. Making room for more. Second thing, we make room for more by dealing with our own stuff. That's a technical term. By dealing with our own stuff. Do you notice in verses 41 and 42, yet yeah, Jesus is talking very hyperbolically here. It's kind of like, you know, your friend has got a little speck in their eye and you've got a plank in your own. What are you going to do? But what I noticed in what Jesus says, Jesus says it is okay to help others deal with their stuff with the speck in their eye, but do so from a place of dealing with our own stuff. He doesn't prohibit us from helping other people, but he says, don't do that in a hypocritical way. Deal with your own stuff so that you are able to serve and love the people around you. And so it seems to me that one of the ways we make room for serving others well is as we work with the Lord in dealing with our own stuff. I love what Tim shared this morning. We come as we are, but we don't stay as we are. We join this great story of God, this story of redemption and salvation of the Lord renewing us and changing us so that we are better able to serve others. It is one of the reasons in this church why small groups are so vitally important. A home group, a tri group, people that we can connect with because we've all got stuff, right? You, 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 yes. I've got stuff. And most of us are kind of thinking, I want to deal with my stuff. Small groups, tri groups, those kind of places in this church are the primary place. Um, we, we run personal prayer sessions, just like some more intentional, intensive prayer to help us deal with our stuff so that we don't stay as we are. Third way that we make room for more is by being equipped to lead others into God's life. Let me read verses 39 to 40 again. Jesus says this. He told them this parable. Can the blind lead the blind? No. Will they not both fall into a pit? Students are not above their teacher, but all who are fully trained will be like their teacher. It seems to me, and I, I'm, I'm sure you've seen this on the news as well, our world desperately needs good leadership, right? Desperately. We see that in our political world here. If you're following the political world in the U.S., you're kind of thinking, help us, Jesus. Like, the world needs good leadership. Good, good leadership. I believe that we can all be people who are one step ahead and able to lead those around us into God's life. I believe that can be true for every one of us. I was reading this this morning. It actually came up in my Bible readings. A guy called John Maxwell says that leadership is influence. And then what was written was this. Sociologists tell us that even the most isolated of us will influence over 10,000 people in our lifetime. So the most, even if we feel like we're really isolated and ineffective, we will actually influence 10,000 people in our lifetime. seems to me that's an incredible opportunity to be one step ahead and to do well in that space of leading people towards Jesus and his life. And it seems to me that we can all be part of making room for more by being fully involved in the life of a local church. And we've said what that looks like, and actually it's on the back of these postcards. So... You've looked at the front, turn it over, you can have a look at the back. We talk about six ways that we can be fully involved. And these things will help us make room for more in our own lives. So engage with the Bible each day. Be part of a weekend service each week. So at the Feltham site, 9.30 and 11.15, online, and then 10.30 at the Stain site. Be part of a small group, I've already referenced that. Give generously is one of the ways that we make room for more. The Lord can't put more in our hands if they're already full. We give away. Serve wholeheartedly as part of a team. That's one of the ways grace comes to us is as we give away. 
we can receive and engage in community. And so these things will help us to do really well in not only following Jesus, doing well in life, but they will help us to connect fully in a church like Riverside Vineyard. In fact, I would go as far as to say this church really only works well if we're part of a team and part of a small group, home group or tri group. That we, it's, there's too many people around. We need to find those places of connection. So making room for more. I want to just briefly share a few ways that we can be making room for more, some things that are coming up, a couple of bits of news to share. So here's a few ways that we can be making room. The first is inviting friends and family. Making room. Every Sunday is a good day to invite your world. Neighbors, friends, people that you work with. There are also what we call tri-church Sundays. Specific moments where we put out some more invitations. The next one is on the 27th of October. Um, we're delighted that we've got a guest speaker, a guy called Andy Hawthorne, who's coming from the Message Trust. We're doing a project with them, which we will share more about. There are going to be baptisms that Sunday. There's going to be a light party for Young Vineyard. Uh, then there's Christmas. I've mentioned the C word. It is coming, friends. Christmas is, mince pies are in the shops, apparently. Who knew? Then there's the Alpha launch. Come and be part of that. The Gospel Choir event in October. There is room to invite your world. There is room for more. Now, one thing that helps is a place to park. Now, I'm sharing this to you because for those of you here that are normally part of the 9.30 service, this is not an issue. We're able to use the Leisure West car park at 9.30. But at 11.15, for those of you that maybe are normally at that service, the car park is often full. And we want the very best spaces for new people, for people that are visiting. And so if you're part of this church and you come to an 11.15 service and you are able to, could you park off-site somewhere? So there's plenty of parking around the back in Browse Lane, down Forest Road. We've got permission to park at the business at the end here called IDL. You can sneak into Leisure West as long as you're under four hours. But this is a very practical way that we can be making room for more. Third thing is around growing diversity. As I've said, we just dearly love the diversity of this church. And one of the things that we have seen over recent months is that the Lord seems to be growing the number of those that are connecting with this church from a South Asian heritage, a South Asian ethnicity. So we're, we're gathering a lunch after the 11.15 service today. Um, and so if that's you, come and join us for lunch. But I passionately believe that every one of us can, can all be part of making room for more diversity in the church community. We can all be a part of this. So here's just a few ways. Warmly welcome people every time you're around, especially those that are different to you. Make a beeline for somebody that's different to you. They may be a different ethnicity. They may be a different age. They may just be different in some way. Welcome people that are different to us. Would you keep on connecting with people that are different to you? Sit. I'm gonna, this is controversial. Sit somewhere else than where you normally sit. I'm waiting for the emails on Monday morning. Look, I have to give up the seat I've sat in for the last 15 years. You'll meet some different people. You will meet some different Connect with people. Sit with different people. Have coffee with different people. Invite people around for, your, for lunch or dinner. Be curious. Ask questions. Over the last couple of months, I've had about two or three moments where I've sat down with Nigerians and Kenyans and Ugandans and Indians. And, and we have just had, the, for, for myself, just the most enriching conversations. Like, how do family gatherings work in your culture? And they've shared stuff. And it's kind of like, I had no idea. Because I am who I am, and you are who you are. So be curious. Ask questions. Fourth thing. Kids and youth ministries. I've said there are over 450 children and youth commit, uh, actively connected to the life of this church, which is amazing. We feel incredibly blessed to be able to serve 
the next generation in that way. And we are going to keep making room for more. We're going to keep multiplying groups. That means we need team. If you are a parent, you have an inclination to serve the next generation, we would love to connect with you. Come and chat with one of us. Now, as many of you will know, over the past few months, we have been looking for a children's and families pastor. Good news this morning. We found one. We found one. Many of you will know her. Miriam is staying with us, which we are absolutely delighted about. Let me just share a little bit of the backstory. So a few months ago, Miriam uh, shared with us that she was moving to a new role at the school where she's already doing some work. And she shared she was really sad to have to make that step. She said to me a couple of days ago she, that she did that with just such a heavy heart, but did so out of a necessity for her family. Over the past few months, the Lord has been at work. And it is also the case that the role that the school offered has not come through in the way that they said it would. So that's not great at that level, but Miriam has shared with us a huge sense of relief that it hasn't worked out. And we share that sense of relief. Um, so all of this means that Miriam is staying with us as our children's and families pastor, which we are delighted because we love what she brings, and we love with her and Christian and their girls, just, the, you know, just them being part of our church family is a blessing to us. So we are absolutely delighted. And at the same time, Julia is continuing to work um, within some of the administration support of Young Vineyard and Youth Ministry. And again, Julia does an amazing job in that area of work as well. So you don't need to do anything other than say to Miriam, great. <laughs> We're delighted that you're staying with us. Uh, fifth little update is this, is around our Money Advice Center. We shared last April and May about expanding how we could serve those in debt um, and financial kind of difficulty through our Compassion Center. And wonderfully, over £50,000 was given at our gift day in May to enable those next steps of development of our Money Advice Center. A key part of that is the recruitment of a Money Advice Center lead role. And I'm delighted to let you know that that role has been appointed in the last week. The bad news this morning is I can't tell you who. Because we're finalizing off a few bits of communication. They need to tell some of their friends first before we make that public. Um, but I'm, we're going to share that next Sunday. I'm just kind of dangling that one out there. Next Sunday. We'll, but... The person that we've got, I mean, my goodness, the skills they're coming with is going to be an incredible blessing to our church. So just delighted with what the Lord has provided. Sixth thing I want to share is around the training and equipping of leaders. We've, we've always lent into this as a church, but I just feel the Lord just kind of heating this up again um, for us. You know, in Luke chapter 6, Jesus effectively says, don't be like a blind person leading a blind person. Don't be like that. I've said, you know, our world and our church needs good leaders. People that are one step ahead. If you, you know, keep up with some of the Christian press, you will know that there are such sad stories out there about bad leadership in church settings. We don't want to be like that. We want our church community to have the very best leaders. And so we need leaders to make room for more. And as I said, we can all be people who are one step ahead and can lead others into God's life. And so to that end, our teaching series for a portion of this term, we're going to be working through the, Paul's letter to 1 Timothy, his first letter to Timothy, under the title of One Step Ahead, because Paul has some incredible wisdom for us. And then on the 2nd of November, I'm delighted that Rick, who's our founding pastor, um, is going to be teaching a Bible day, a theology day, on Paul's second letter to Timothy. So we're going to get both, both of those letters, which, is, which I think is going to be wonderful for us. Um, and Rick is going to be uh, leading a day under the title of Passing the Baton. Again, there is incredible wisdom that comes from Paul to Timothy, his dear son in the Lord. And so bookings are now open for that day. You can 
click on that on the screen. It's in what's on, um, so please don't miss that. We also have a leadership training pathway in this church. I just simply, that's on the next side. I want to encourage you to connect with the next thing. And some of those next things, there's a newcomer's lunch. There'll be Riverside Vineyard Essentials later this term. There's our introduction to leadership, which I think is in about three weeks' time. Connect with the next thing. Be equipped. You know, that, that's what Jesus says. Be equipped. Be trained to become more like your teacher. In other words, there's stuff for us to learn that will help us make room for more. Seventh thing, this is the last thing that I'm going to share before I close. We can make room for more through new sites of this church. As, as I've reflected on that, Bethan and I have had the extraordinary privilege of being senior pastors for 13 years now. In fact, it's 13 years tomorrow, I think, or, or this week. And one of the best things that we have been a part of is launching the site in Staines. Just for us personally, from a ministry perspective, I think that is one of the best things that we have been a part of. We love what the Lord is doing there, but we also love what it is enabled at this site. There is more room physically, but there is more room for people to get involved, to step up, to serve, and to lead. And I've shared this map before. This is like our prayer map. These are some of the places that we would love to be and, and are praying for potential places that we could consider. And it feels to a bunch of us on the staff team that the Lord has given us the green light to explore the next site that he's opening up for us. So that is what we are going to start doing in the months ahead. But maybe as you just look at that map, you see a part of that and maybe your heart has started to race. That could be coffee, or it could be the Lord. could be him nudging you to be part of pioneering something new. Because maybe one of those places is close to where you are. Or maybe it's somewhere where, you know, that just dropped into my mind last week. I wonder whether the Lord is doing something there. There may be something in you that is just stirring. And if that is the case, would you come and chat with one of us? It might be something it might be nothing. It might be an amazing thing. Come and chat with us. We're just excited for the way that these new sites, these new locations are making room for people to find Jesus and go on that journey of finding themselves in God's great story. L let me close by, by sharing a story. Many of you know that Bethan and I love walking. And one of the things we did a few years ago we, was we walked the Thames Path, not in one go, that's too long. We did it in sections. We did it, um, I think it was springtime, and we were up in Oxfordshire, walking some sections of the path up in Oxfordshire, and we came across this field which was completely underwater. So it looked something like this, and the whole field was about six inches underwater, and we had no way to get around it, so we had to go through it. You know the old nursery tale, can't get around it, can't go there. Uh, boots off, rolling up the walking trousers, and just hoping for the best and walking through it. What had happened, the river had burst its banks. There was water everywhere, and it seems to me that's what rivers can do, right? Rivers are powerful. Rivers can get messy, they can run wild. And it seems to me that that can be exactly the same in our life with the Lord. The way that we have this journey of life with the Spirit of God. There is a power in the presence of God that makes a way for his life to come. And as much as we would like the Lord to be predictable, and I hope he's not. I, I sometimes feel for the poor disciples that were spending three years with Jesus because I don't think they knew what the next day was going to be like. It was just constantly, Jesus was doing this and then this and then this, and they didn't know which way was up. But it seems to me that is the life of the Spirit that the Lord invites us into. That's how rivers run. And Jesus says this to Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He says, the wind, and that same word can be translated as spirit, so the wind or the spirit blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is 
with everyone born of the Spirit. That is what Jesus wants our lives to be like. You see, the Spirit moves wherever he pleases. And that is to be the same for everyone born of the Spirit. I remember something that, that John Wimber used to say. John Wimber was the founding pastor of the vineyard. And he used to say something like, Lord, I'm like spare change in your pocket. Spend me however you will. Lord, wherever you want to take me, the answer is yes. The answer is yes. I want to be like caught up in that river that can just burst its banks and go wherever it wants to go. I want to be caught up in the wind, the breath of God's spirit, which is just like, and you just caught up. It's like, like be, be like a sailing boat. Put your sail up and catch the wind. Catch the wind. So this year, my encouragement, my prayer for us all, make room for more of the Lord. Hold on tight and enjoy the ride. Amen.